Hello everyone. First of all, to anyone who may have been taken in by the previous video, April Fools, uh, fairly obvious one this year, I hope. Uh, I'm not planning to switch from 20th century collecting and reenacting to 17th century. It's possible it's something that might be covered on the channel in future because I do have friends who, who cover that time period. A big thank you to David, uh, my friend David Bell Hartley, for lending me the, the uniform, the kit for that video. So thank you very much, David. But I, as I say, I'm not moving away from the, the normal stuff that's been covered on the channel up to this point and uh, certainly not uh, moving away from that area of collecting. What I'm bringing you today, of course, or what I'm bringing you in addition to the previous video, is the Mannequin of the Month for April 2021. And what we're looking at today is a Lewis Gunner of the Royal Navy Coast Watch, uh, which was a Royal Navy unit which patrolled the coast uh, immediate po I mean, the immediate post Dunkirk uh, time frame and basically served as infantry um, but in a, a coastal defence role. So quite an interesting formation, uh, sort of harkens back to earlier Royal Navy deployments on land. The Royal Navy deployed on land in an infantry role is always interesting to me at least right through from naval brigades right the way through the naval division of the, the Great War and through to units like the Coast Watch. So we're going to talk about the kit that's on the mannequin here. It's an interesting mix of naval and army issue equipment and uniform and as is usual we'll start with what we have uh, at the top of the mannequin here which is the Mark II steel helmet. You can see this is painted in grey. We have a, a Mark II steel helmet up there and then we have the main part of the uniform would have been backrest surge or possibly 1940 pattern by this point but certainly battle dress surge would have been the more common. So we have a battle dress surge blouse here would have been worn with the trousers as well, which I, I couldn't fit onto the mannequin. And interesting, interestingly enough, would have been worn with Royal Navy leggings, the lace-up Royal Navy issue leggings and, and the Royal Navy issue ankle boots. So a mix of uniform and stuff there, using Royal Navy leggings with battle dress, which is quite an interesting look. Obviously not something that can really be considered on the mannequin, but it's something I might uh, show in a video going forward if I put this kit on as a, as a whole. Then at the front here, we have a fairly typical element for certainly earlier through mid-war British troops uh, is the respirator haversack worn at the alert or carried at the alert up on the chest there. This is a Mark V example as you can see and as I say carried up on the chest there so that it's easy to access the respirator from there. Obviously the threat of gas attack at this time frame was still seen as a, a major a major threat so the respirator carried at the alert there and in addition of course we have the anti-gas cape carried up on the shoulders which we'll see when we move this round. Something to note at the front here Modifications carrying the anti-gas cape, which have been introduced in September of 1940, is the use of whip cord tied off to the ring, the D-ring on the respirator have a sack to keep that up on the back rolled. So you can just pull that knot, the whip cord will untie and it will roll down the back. That's the idea of that modification. So we've included that on the mannequin here. The web equipment, again, this is a mix, a mixing of naval kit with the army's uniform. This is 1919 pattern. Now being a Lewis gunner, uh, this chap is not wearing 1908 with the cartridge carriers, has no need of those. Uh, photographs do show Lewis Gunners of the Royal Navy Coast Watch wearing 1919 pound pistol equipment. So what we have at the front here obviously is the belt, the three-part belt, so it's quite different from 1937 pattern in that regard, although outwardly it's, it's not dissimilar. And we have the ammunition pouch on the right-hand side here, and on the left-hand side we have an early issue of the pistol case or holster with a wooden bung in the bottom, uh, so it's quite an early design of, of pistol case. We'll have a look at that as we move this round, it'll be clearer to see as we move the mannequin round. You can see there are L-straps coming over the shoulder here, and they hook into the brace attachments, much as was the case with 1937 pattern. These are later issue brace attachments with a square keeper, originally 1919 pattern. The ring here had been round rather than squared off. So there are a mix of early and, and later components of 1919 pattern worn here. So as I say, with being a Lewis Gunner, wearing pistol equipment. So we'll move this round now and have a look at the left-hand side. You can see here, looking at the left-hand sleeve, there's no insignia worn. The battle dress is devoid of insignia in this instance. If we lift the sleeve out of the way, you can see the pistol case for the 1919 pattern equipment here. And you can also see that this is a three-part belt. You can see this section here is where the front section clips onto the rear section. It's the same on the other side and that's how it adjusts as the, the front two sections are moved around on the rear piece to adjust the waist. The pistol case itself, you can see there's a wooden plug in the base there, riveted in place. 
and then you have obviously the press stood on the flap there. So it's similar to 1937 pattern, the later 1937 pattern, but has that early feature of the wooden plug in the base. You see we have a lanyard running down here to the Mark VI Webley revolver carried in there, obsolescent by this period, but still carried uh, by some. So that's the, uh, the left-hand side of the mannequin. You can also see around the back here, the side profile of the 1919 pattern rucksack, which is carried on the back. You can see the straps on the side here, neatly rolled. These would have been used ordinarily if a full marching order was being carried to carry a rolled up blanket or perhaps oil skin around the outside of the rucksack. We would normally have a haversack here on the hip, but that's been omitted and the rucksack's being carried. The haversack for the 1919 pattern was very small, didn't have a great carrying capacity, was really only suitable for carrying rations. So to carry a meaningful load, the rucksack is carried on the back here akin to 1937 pattern, just with the, have the rucksack replacing the haversack to give you a similar load carrying capacity. So that's the left hand side of the mannequin. We'll move this round now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of the mannequin, we of course get a better view of the 1919 pattern rucksack, which you can see here. And it's quite a good design, really. Uh, it's a nice halfway house between the 1937 pattern haversack and the pack from the 1908 equipment in terms of carrying capacity and has external fixtures and fittings. You have a strap here to carry the mess tin on the back, the D-shaped mess tins in their cover, should they be carried. And now you can see the strap up on the flap here, which continues that series of straps around the outside, which allow you to carry a rolled blanket around the outside. It's a good design. Uh, I believe it's also, it's very similar to a pack designed for issue to Belgian troops during the Great War and also the officers' web equipment as well. So it's not a, a design entirely married to this equipment. It's sort of a Mills proprietary design that was introduced with the 1919 pattern for naval use. Quite an interesting design and quite different from obviously the 1908 pack and the 1937 pattern haversack in having these fixtures and fittings for external stowage. You see it's quite a bit bigger than the 1937 pattern haversack as well. Not fully loaded uh, as was shown in the photographs that have been used to reference this. And of course on the side here we have the ratings cap carried. Obviously the helmet is worn so we have the ratings carrying his cap on the, uh, the side of the uh, rucksack there. Up at the top, we can see the anti-gas cape rolled and carried across the shoulders. You can see the whip cord in the center here that holds it together so that when that knot at the front is untied, this will unroll, the, it releases the cord and the, the idea is that the gas cape will roll down the back of the body and can then be donned. Of course, it does have sleeves and things, so it's not purely a cape. It can be actually put on like a coat. And the idea of just rolling down the back is it makes that a little bit easier. The way the belt is supported, you can see the two brace ends coming down here. It's buckled onto the back of the belt, very much akin to 1937 pattern. The braces come over and the brace design is essentially exactly the same as 1937 pattern. Though I doubt you'd be able to see the, the back of the belt there. There are two buckles again, very similar to 1937 pattern. That's the back of the mannequin. We'll move this round now and have a look at the right hand side. Looking at the right hand side here, there's not a huge amount more to see. You can see again the ratings cap hung on the side of the rucksack there. If we lift the arm out of the way, you can again see how the belt adjusts here. You can see that the, the L-straps on the 1919 pattern rucksack are not actually detachable in the way they are with 1937 pattern. You can see the lower strap coming down here and it just loops, it has a hook here and a D-ring. It can be unhooked at the base, but it's captive at the top. So it's not removable from the rucksack in the same way as the L-straps with 1937 pattern can be taken off and moved from the pack to the haversack and vice versa. You can also see the ammunition pouch here, which we had a look at when this was viewed front on. Uh, there's not much huge amount more to talk about on this side, really, but that is the right hand side of the mannequin just to show you those final details. So there we are. I hope you found this interesting, something a little bit different. As I say, I like covering naval uh, forces wherever possible, and this certainly gives a good opportunity to show one with the web equipment and so forth set up on the mannequin. So that's been quite nice to do. Hopefully you found this interesting, as I say, if you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and whether you're new to subscribing or you've previously subscribed please do make sure you hit the little bell little notification button down below that will of course alert you when i upload future videos if you really like my uploads and you would perhaps like to vote on the topic that's going to be covered in mannequin of the month each month please do consider checking out patreon which is also linked down below and also paypal is linked down there as well and a massive thank you as ever to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods it's greatly appreciated as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media where there will be photographs of this posted up as well, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. If you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media there is of course an email address down there as well. 
But that's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.